Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Sunday, September 30th, 2018. Gamblersadvisory.com, free site. Uh, bettingangle.us, free site. Let's talk about Callum Smith taking the title from George Groves. But since it's been a few days, let me also mention a few other boxing stories up front. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, sometimes the press downplays some stories, right? Because we all want to support sports. We want people to buy into the mythology that these are great men, that they're doing great things, that they're being heroic. But what I want people to do is to keep a very close eye because in my eyes, this is a major story, major. Keep a very close eye on this Billy Joe Saunders failed drug test. Understand that Billy Joe Saunders apparently tested positive for the same drug for which Estafa Powell who used to be the fastest man in the world, Jamaican sprinter, got suspended over a year. Let me also say too that Victor Conti, the guy who helped Shane Mosley for part of his career, the guy who helped Barry Bonds and Gary Sheffield for parts of their careers, he's saying that this drug is 10 times more powerful than clenbuterol, what Canelo tested positive for. Now understand, if Billy Joe has secrets, and we all know the story already, right? You know his version of the events. He took a supplement yesterday or two days ago that he trusted, that somehow came back with a positive drug test. And before that, he never used a substance before in his life. I'm assuming that's going to be Billy Joe's story, right? None of these athletes want to tell you that they've been having secrets for years. But just understand, if this guy has been a habitual user of this drug, he's had some wins that, quite frankly, need to be re-examined, right? The Chris Eubank fight. On my scorecard, Saunders starts great. He's looking great. Then he runs out of stamina in the second half of the fight. What I want you to do is to Google that fight. Look at how the last five rounds of that fight went. Right? Understand, if a guy is taking a drug that increases his stamina, that allows him to be tough late in a fight, that allows him to maintain the pace and not slow down, right? Then that guy is going to look better in the second half of fights that he should be beaten up in, right? If, and I don't know, we'll never know, but if Billy Joe Saunders was juicing for that Chris Eubank fight, folks, that fight is so razor close, Saunders could easily have lost that fight. Weren't you a little surprised by Saunders' energy and stamina in the later rounds of his fight against David Lemieux? Understand, Lemieux's a home run hitter. He's just trying to knock you out. You slow down by five miles an hour, he might catch you. Right? Billy Joe looked in magnificent shape the second half of that fight. Now I'm wondering whether that was all natural. That's a big story. I want you to pay close attention to that story, right? I personally feel that Billy Joe loses to Demetrius Andre. Let's continue. Lennox Lewis has come out and has said, look, Alexander Povetkin should retire, right? Um, Costa Zoo has come out and has said, look, Bevetkin started strong, but he didn't have a plan B. Let me just say, folks, we're in an era where I'm openly questioning the heavyweight champions. 
not just Joshua, but Deontay Wilder, who I think is a bit one-dimensional, right? I just have to tell you that if I'm Prevetkin, why would I retire right now? It's not like Lennox Lewis and Mike Tyson are the heavyweight champs. It's not like you look at them and you say, man, I'm a 39-year-old dude. What am I going to do in here against prime Mike Tyson? Right? That's not boxing today. You have one guy who was dropped by Vladimir Klitschko. Right? Who Carlos Tackum is completely alert in the later rounds against. Right? Then you have the other guy who is given a standing eight count at the beginning of a round, something I've never seen before, against Luis Ortiz. Right? So to me, let's just put it this way. On my scorecard, he was beating Joshua at the time of that stoppage. I know the judges saw it differently. Come on. I'm not, <laughs> not going to get into that quagmire. On my scorecard, that fight was not only competitive. I had Prevetkin beating Joshua at the time of the stoppage. You know, I believe Prevetkin with this style, he doesn't even have to be imaginative. He doesn't need a plan B. I think he beats Deontay Wilder. Can we say that in public? If he just mixes this style up with a back foot game, understand Joshua doesn't move that well. Right? If you're a guy with foot speed who can, as they say in boxing, take rounds off. You're 39 years old. You should be thinking about taking rounds off especially when you're fighting these young lions out here, right? If Prevetkin just figures out how to take rounds off against Anthony Joshua, start fast, map out the fight. When he says, okay, I'm going to start fast, then I'm going to take some rounds off, then I'm going to come back strong, right? I'm not sure if Anthony Joshua has great stamina, Folks, he's gone the distance once in his career. Not only that, big muscular guys, they tire faster than everyone else. They do. So Prevetkin, given that we have some fights on the horizon, right? Fury against Wilder. Presumably the winner of that fight is going to fight Joshua, although that's unclear for political reasons, right? Josh was talking about fighting uh, Wilder regardless of what Fury does. I don't know what that's about. My point to Prevetkin is simply, look, you don't have to fight every week. You don't have to fight every four or five months. But in this climate, I believe a Prevetkin is competitive. Also, Heavyweights age more slowly than everyone else. I'm going to disagree with Lennox Lewis here. I think Prevetkin still is live in this heavyweight division. One punch in the seventh round of a fight he's winning isn't going to shake me off that belief. Right? You saw Joshua look surprised. You notice the foot speed and hand speed gap between Joshua and a 39-year-old. You notice that gap, right? If I'm Prevetkin, I say to myself, okay, I came in on Joshua's right side. That's a mistake. I didn't vary the pace of the fight, right? Costa Zoo's right. He needs more of a plan B, right? That's why a back foot is so helpful, folks, right? Prevetkin should have had a back foot zone where he's just shooting a jab and making sure Joshua's not close enough to catch him. Right? If he mixes it up a bit, if he comes up with a plan B, I think he's dangerous. I'm not sure if Dylan White beats Alexander Povetkin. Right? As I've said, I think Povetkin beats Deontay Wilder. Right? Food for thought. Let's talk about Callum Smith uh, over George Groves. Fascinating fight. Fascinating fight. Callum Smith by KO delivered. I think I have a video up here online. It's in my favorites folder from a few months ago 
you could have gotten three and a half to one odds on Callum Smith by KO. But let's talk about the fight because the fight was interesting. Right? I don't know what George Groves was doing. Let me say, at the time of the knockout, the fight's competitive to me. Right? An argument can be made that either guy is winning the fight. But here's what I don't get. First, how 6'3 Callum Smith is making 168 pounds. I'm guessing that doesn't last. I'm guessing the guy's going to have to look at 175. And he's going to have to ask himself if he can compete. Right? Let me say, too, if he goes to 175, I think he would have problems against Adonis Stevenson. Right? Because Stevenson creates a mobile pocket. In other words, Stevenson, who's a puncher, that left hand is solid. Right? That's an A-plus punch. But Stevenson doesn't stand in front of you and allow you to set up shop at mid-range. Stevenson moves around the ring. He jumps around the ring. Then he comes in with quick strikes. Right? He's, he's the heavier version of Manny Pacquiao. Right? Both guys, same type of thing. Both guys southpaws. Both guys jump around a bit. Then they come in with a home run punch. Callum Smith in this fight, and it's shocking. I don't know what George Groves is doing. Callum Smith, a mid-range hooker, is able to set up shop at mid-range. George Groves is in front of him. Groves doesn't create a mobile pocket. Callum Smith is on his front foot. He's continually hunting George Groves, right? And George Groves is there. Maybe he's trying to prove to us that left hand is, is good or something. He's flicking a left hand jab that's perfunctory, right? And he's trying to trade with Callum Smith at mid-range. Callum Smith, by the way, even though he's taller, gives away his height. Right? He's not leaning back. He's not hard to find. You know where he is to find. He's right in front of you. He's just trying to be the bigger man, throwing the bigger hooks on you. So the end of the fight is really a tale of two punches. Competitive fight. George Groves gets hit with a counter left hook. It's a counter left hook. The millisecond before that punch lands, George Groves is 100%. He's completely lucid. He's not being outboxed. The fight is even, at least to me. Then Callum Smith lands a picture-perfect counter-left hook. Now, why are you fighting a mid-range hooker within range of getting hit with a hook that's the million-dollar question for the George Groves camp. right? When you look at the round two, it's not even like Callum Smith has to figure out where Groves is going to be. He could have thrown that counter-left hook three seconds before that, or six seconds before that. George Groves is in front of him, folks. Go figure. Well, that counter-left hook changes things. George Groves then staggers over to the corner where he's badly hurt, then we have the second punch that matters. Callum Smith starts to open up. George Groves blocks some of the shots. Callum Smith even tries an uppercut. Then he throws a, guess what? Right hook to George Groves' ribs. That ends the fight. George Groves gets hit in the ribs, goes down, couldn't get back up. You could tell that shot takes the wind out of him. So right now, Callum Smith sits atop of the super middleweight title. He's someone you need to watch. First off, he's unbeaten. Second, the resume is better than you think. He's already beaten Rocky Fielding. In a fight where Callum Smith meets Fielding in the middle of the ring and blows him out. 
Let me say this too. Callum Smith's corner is wisely calling out David Benavides. I think Smith beats Benavides, who is married to the pocket. Understand, if you're going to fight Callum Smith, you're going to have to present angles and you're going to have to figure out how to handle the distance. He's a big guy. There's a lot of body to hit. He leans forward. You can either be deep in the pocket, right? I think Errol Spence, if he was the same size as Callum Smith, would be Callum Smith. Because Errol Spence is deep in the pocket, throwing hooks to your rib cage. Right? You either have to be deep in the pocket, we'll call it Errol Spence style. Or you have to create a mobile pocket. Right? So Callum Smith has some fascinating fights out there right now. Right? A fight against David Benavides, I think he beats Benavides. If we decide to go one floor up, if we decide to take on even more adventurous guys, you have James DeGale right there at 168 pounds. Be careful what you wish for, right? Because DeGale is a switch hitter, right? He, he can come at you righty, he can come at you lefty. I believe prime DeGale, and the question is whether DeGale is still prime. Right? Because the Gales had some rough goes of it of late. Right? Teeth knocked out against Badu Jack. A loss, then a win against Caleb Truax. Right? The Gales slowing down. Gives up his title. Wants to establish a legacy. Right? The Gale against Callum Smith, I take the Gale. Simply because the Gale to me is a different level of fighter. Right? The Gale has a back foot. We saw that against Andre Durrell. Again, that's younger the Gale. The question is which the Gale shows up. I believe few people can hang with the Gale on the inside. I believe the Gale has been in the ring against big hitters before. Why do Jack has a bite, doesn't he? I don't think Callum Smith's power is going to overwhelm him. That would be an all-British dust-up. My concern is that you look at Callum Smith, he's in his 20s. Right? He doesn't have a lot of fat on him. He really belongs in a different weight class. I get the feeling James DeGale making 168 as a guy in his 30s, just a few years older than Callum Smith, but different body type. I believe that's a little bit tough on DeGale. Folks, that's an A-plus fight. Callum Smith, James DeGale. Let me name another one, and I'm not sure if it's even possible. Because Adonis Stevenson has a real tough opponent in front of him. Gross Dick. I know I'm butchering the pronunciation. But that guy is tough. Right? But let's say Adonis Stevenson gets by that fight. Let me also point out, too, that Adonis Stevenson, like Billy Joe Saunders, has faded in some fights. Right, You see him late in a fight, his fight against Badu Jack, and he's practically holding on. He's not the fighter he was early in the fight. Of course, that's because Adonis Stevenson's older. Right? Let me just say, you hope you never hear, and I'm sure you'll never hear it, but you hope you never hear that Adonis Stevenson was on the kind of drug that Billy Joe Saunders is. Because when you see a guy who gets tired in fights, if you later hear he's on a stamina increasing PED, that's going to cast doubt on fights, right? Just food for thought. Well, anyway, Stevenson has the same stamina issues, in my opinion, that Billy Joe Saunders has. So against a young guy like Callum Smith, the million-dollar question is whether Callum Smith, who I don't think finds Stevenson in the early rounds, I think Stevenson's legs are better than Smith's, 
right? The question is whether Callum Smith can last to the part of the fight where Stevenson gets tired. And then whether Smith can then lift the light heavyweight championship, right? So let me just say congratulations to Callum Smith. The same advice that I gave Alexander Povetkin, I'm going to give Callum Smith, right? I have seen Callum Smith on his back foot at times in other fights. But Callum Smith these days is front foot heavy, right? He's front foot heavy. He's trying to decimate you with hooks. Now that works on the contender level, right? That doesn't work, in my opinion, at the championship level against savvy champs. What Callum Smith is going to have to start to do is to use his reach, at least have a different zone. We don't even have to call it plan B. You have a plan A, right? Whatever he does well, mid-range hooking, hitting guys with counter left hooks, right? Then have an alt A, where you're looking good against a fighter, then you say, you know what, I need to vary my game plan a little bit because my opponent is savvy and I need to confuse my opponent for parts of this round. I can't be too predictable. You could vacillate between the plan A and the plan alt A. But what you can't do is what Prevetkin did against Joshua. Have an episodic Mike Tyson style. Folks, he's even wearing black trunks against um, against Joshua. You can't come in with a Mike Tyson style, then allow Joshua several rounds in. Understand, Joshua doesn't make the adjustment until like round five or six, several rounds in. Allow Joshua to then say, how do I cope with this style? Let me go more flat-footed. Let me be more, you know, geared toward countering and stuff like that, right? and then not be able to respond to Joshua's adjustment, right? If I'm Callum Smith, I have the mid-range hooking, I'm the bigger man. I'm throwing a lot of power punches style down. I would have been more impressed in his fight against Groves if he suddenly decided to go back foot Bust up Groves with a jab a little bit. Let Groves know you're not as tall as me. Right? Until you get by this jab, this fight's not going to change. You're going to lose some rounds. Let me say this too to the Groves fans. Groves, I consider Groves to be an advanced fighter. But what I've long faulted Groves for is his in-fight thinking, right? He's, he's fighting Carl Frotch. He has a lead on Carl Frotch. Where was his alt A? Where was his, hey, let me, let me protect this lead. Let me not sit here and trade with him. Here he's fighting Callum Smith. Folks, Callum Smith is two-handed. Callum Smith wants to own the pocket. What are you doing staying in the pocket? Right? At, at some point, testosterone has to give way to common sense. Right? Why is Grove standing in front of Callum Smith round after round? What is he thinking? Right? He should have been inside standing up Callum Smith. Right? Come inside, grab him. He should have been channeling some Bernard Hopkins, shouldn't he have? Lower your head, come inside, let Callum Smith know you're going to be making a run at his ribcage. Tall guy. Have him thinking about it at least. Right? Have Callum Smith trying to follow you around the ring and you're using lateral movement, not just going straight back. But you're using lateral movement. 
if you're going to throw shots from in the pocket, move as you throw the shot. You don't throw a shot and then be unprotected for a counter left hook. What's that about? So George Groves, in a fight he could have won, folks, the fight's competitive. Callum Smith is not blowing George Groves out. I thought George Groves didn't have the right game plan for this opponent. Right? Callum Smith is exactly who you thought he would be. Throwing big hooks from in the pocket. How come George Groves wasn't better prepared for that? Anyway, that's one man's opinion. Let me hear yours. If you feel that this Billy Joe Saunders situation is being swept under the rug, and I understand Demetrius Andre is going to be fighting for the title, Billy Joe Saunders is not. He's been stripped. Okay, fair enough. But my question is, how long has this been going on? Shouldn't we really rough up Billy Joe here? Right? Victor Conti, who would know? Claims this drug is 10 times more powerful than clenbuterol. Just be aware of the fact, though, that Conti is working with DeAndre Camp. Right? Food for thought. Also, Alexander Povetkin. Should he retire after looking better than expected as a 7-1 to underdog for the first half of his fight against Anthony Joshua? <laughs> Don't you think that if Deontay Wilder loses to Tyson Fury, that Povetkin would have a shot on Wilder, that Povetkin would have a shot on Dylan White, who's being talked about as possibly an opponent for, for um, AJ. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.